Hi, my name's Stan Riddle with ACO M Group. Today's uh, discussion is really a general overview of the fundamentals of industrial lubrication. You know, in essence, uh, the world rotates on lubricants, not literally, but figuratively. They're used in transportation, manufacturing, industrial machinery, even equipment around your house, uh, from your vehicle to your air conditioner. Almost any type of machine that moves uses lubricants. Uh, so we want to talk a little about those. What do lubricants do? Most people think it's pretty straightforward. But in essence, lubricants have several jobs they do in a piece of machinery. Uh, number one and primarily is they support sliding loads. If you think of two gears interacting with each other or the balls in a ball bearing rotating, lubricants help to support those sliding loads. They reduce friction and wear. Uh, they help disperse heat or carry heat away from the place where heat's being generated, like a bearing or a gear set, move it to somewhere else like a sump or a cooler. Uh, they seal against and they help remove contaminants. They prohibit rust and corrosion. And quite honestly, they reduce energy consumption because as you add lubrication and things run smoother, they don't require as much energy. You know, out of all the types of lubricants, of which there are many, there are really two main classes of lubricants that are used in industrial machinery, oils and greases. So really, an oils are mostly mineral or synthetic-based liquids, and a grease is an oil that uh, has been uh, mixed with a chemical soap agent to thicken it and really make it a semi-solid. If you think about the differences, oil is a liquid and grease is a semi-solid. Other than that, there are many similarities between the two. So one thing I'd like to talk about is, is four of the most important points in lubrication, uh, what we like to call the four C's. And they really are number one, compatibility, and that's compatibility to lubricant types. Number two, cleanliness, specifically of the lubricant, the system, and the containers. Number three is containment, which is really keeping the lubricant where it needs to be and keeping it from where it doesn't need to be. And the fourth C is control, and that's control of the proper amount of lubricant. Not too much, not too little, just right. So let's talk about those in a little bit more detail. Number one, compatibility. Uh, first and foremost, lubricants of different types, manufacturers, weights, additive packages, and so on, should not be mixed together. Uh, if you think about it, changing the types of lubricants can cause contamination issues. Uh, by changing the additive packages, mixing it together, changing the weights. You, you reduce the life of both the lubricant and the parts that are being lubricated by mixing uh, packages. So compatibility is an important one. Number two, and really should probably be number one, I think, for most mechanics, and that is cleanliness. Cleanliness of the lubricant, cleanliness of the tools, cleanliness of the hands, really cleanliness of the entire system. Uh, while most mechanics don't specify the lubricant types being used, we do have a big responsibility for maintaining lubricant cleanliness. You know, dirty oil, dirty grease, dirty lube application devices. How many of us have seen a grease gun rolling around in the back of a golf cart or an easy-go cart? And, you know, the, uh, the spout's just flipping around everywhere and it's got a big cake of mud on it. Most of us have seen zerk fittings or grease fittings with just big piles of dirt and dust. And you'd be amazed how many people will shove a grease gun on that thing and start pumping grease without ever wiping it off. Uh, I remember years ago changing cooling tower oils. And we would carry two empty five-gallon buckets up to the cooling tower, drain it, carry them downstairs, dump it into a tank, and use those same buckets to put brand new expensive synthetic oils and carry it right back up. And we had contaminated this brand new clean oil. Keep in mind cleanliness is a big deal in lubrication of equipment. Uh, the third C is containment. And I really mean putting lubricant where it needs to be, putting no more lubricant there than is required for its function, and maintaining sealing systems. Most of us in industry know what a blown bearing seal or shield looks like. Once you blow that seal or shield, uh, it can't do its job anymore. A seal's job is to keep the lubricant in and keep the dirt out. When you blow that, you've, you've lost both of those labyrinth seals that are just caked up. Uh, you know, we have to 
contain the lubricant to where it needs to be and contain things that don't need to be in there, such as water or grease or dirt or things like that. Uh, we've got to keep them separated. The fourth C is really control, and that's really controlling the amount of lubricant installed or added. You need to know when the oil needs to be changed uh, or even when grease needs to be changed. We usually recommend, you know, going by the manufacturer's recommendations on changing lubricants. Uh, you may want to talk to the machinery manufacturer about using synthetics or things that can get a longer lifespan. It's better for the environment, makes it easier for you. Filtering. Filtering is extremely critical, especially on oil systems, on large ones. Uh, filters need to be of the uh, right size. Filters that are too, too fine will strip the additive packages. Filters that are too coarse won't filter at all. Oil sampling and testing, something you hear a lot about, and a lot of companies do that anymore to their credit. You can extend the life of a lubricant if you know what kind of contaminants are getting in it. You can also use an oil sampling check for wear metals, know if your parts or components are breaking down or wearing down beyond their useful life. Uh, we recommend that you follow the manufacturer's recommendations, both for the type and the amount of lubricant. Simple old school things such as sight glasses or oil globes, things like that, they need to be clean, they need to be properly set and adjusted, and they need to be checked. And you need a device to know for grease to know when is enough. I'm old enough to remember we would use a mechanic stethoscope, just a little stethoscope, and pump grease till you heard the sound change in it. Uh, now you can buy ultrasonic tools from different manufacturers that can actually listen to that. Uh, vibration tools, we have a vibration tool, a few vibration tools we sell that are great to use as lubrication tools. When you know that bearing gets enough grease, you don't need to keep greasing. Uh, we've got some images that, as you can see, of, of motors that have been grossly over-greased, uh, and that's an important aspect. So the four C's, just keep those in mind. And lastly, I want to talk about storage, storing lubricants. Uh, most of us in industry have seen lubricants stored outside and rainwater sitting on top of the barrel. Uh, it's, it's not a good call. Lubricants should be stored, kept clean, kept dry, and it should be temperature controlled. Oil containers should be specified for the type of lubricants you use, labeled as such. I'm a big fan of tote tanks. When you bring in a lubricant in 55 gallon drums, such as oil, you should pump it out of that tank through a portable filtration system, load it up to a tote tank that's labeled so you know what that lubricant is and you know you don't uh, contaminate it by mixing the types of lubricants. From, a, from a, an on-point site, a point of delivery process, again, wipe out the grease gun off, wipe the zerk fitting off, wipe your hands off, clean them before and after. Uh, on zerk fittings, I like the little caps so you can cover it up to keep some of the grease or some of the dirt off of that. Uh, again, back to cleanliness is one of the most important things we can do. So while this is a quick overview, I just wanna quickly summarize to you these points we've discussed. Uh, important factors to keep in mind to reduce lubrication uh, related failures, increase the usable life of the lubricant and the machines, and minimize product contamination. Simple processes to follow, keep it clean. Keep from cross-mixing lubricants of different types together. Keep it contained so that the lubricant stays where it's supposed to and doesn't get out to where it's not supposed to be. And honestly, have a way to control it or know you're putting the right amount, the right type of lubricant in, and you gotta know when to say when. Uh, we all know that over-greasing is one of the biggest problems in the industry today, so you've gotta know when enough lubricant is enough. And again, I'm Stan Riddle with ACOM, and thank you for your time. Audio Jungle.